Hello dear grade 7 children. Today you all are here with me to learn the fourth lesson of the textbook. That is functions of water. Do you remember even in grade 6 science we learn about water? What are the topics we discuss about? Do you remember that we learn that there are different types of water based on availability, based on salinity and further we learn that importance of water. So water is very important in our day-to-day -day activities and again we learn that water is a limited resource. So what are we going to learn under this lesson? We are going to learn about functions of water. We will see what are the topics that we have to discuss about. Right. So this lesson we are going to discuss under three main topics. Water as a solvent, water as a coolant, and water as a medium of life. So what is the meaning of a solvent? This term solvent is a new term for y'all. So under this term we are going to discuss about what is the meaning of solvent and how water is very important as a solvent. And then we are going to learn about water as a coolant. So under this topic we are learning that uh, water can absorb a large amount of heat and therefore water is considered as a very good coolant. And then we are going to learn about water as a medium of life. Now this topic we have already discussed when we did the grade 6 work. Therefore I think you all are familiar with this topic. So under this one we are going to learn how water is important to uh, continue the life of the living beings. So we will start our work. Now we are going to discuss about the first topic under this lesson that is water as a solvent. So what is a solvent? Before we discuss about how water becomes a good solvent, look at these two pictures. What is the first picture? It's given sea water. So what is the taste of this sea water children? You all know that sea water is salt in taste. What is the reason? If you remember grade 6 science, you learned that there are many salts dissolving sea water. So therefore, that sea water has a lot of salts dissolving it, like different types of salts dissolving it. Sodium chloride, calcium chloride. So there are a number of salts dissolving it. And further we learn that using seawater we can produce salt that we used in day-to-day -day life. So it means seawater has a lot of salts dissolved in it. So this nature is known as the salinity of water. Salinity means the amount of substances or salts dissolved in water. So it means water can dissolve a lot of salts. Look at the second picture. Fish living in water. How do we breathe children? We have lungs and we can absorb the atmospheric oxygen because we have lungs. Do these fish have lungs? They don't have lungs. So how do they breathe? They breathe using special structures called gills. Okay children. So how do they inhale oxygen using gills? Can they inhale atmospheric oxygen? They cannot. In order to absorb atmospheric oxygen, we have to have lungs. Now fish, they don't have lungs, therefore they cannot absorb atmospheric oxygen. So how do they obtain oxygen? So they obtain the oxygen that is dissolved in water. Okay. They obtain, they inhale the oxygen that is dissolved in water. Dissolved. Right? So it means oxygen gas dissolves in water. Now another example. Let's say you want to make a lime juice. How do you make a lime juice? You will uh, get some lime juice from the lime fruit and you will mix it with water. Right? Then you would add some salt and some sugar to make it tastier. So it means what do you do? You add lime juice, sugar and salt to water and you mix it really well. 
So what happens? These substances will dissolve in water. So when you make tea also the same thing happens. You can add milk powder and you can add uh, sugar. So you can make a tea. Okay children. So it means water has the ability to dissolve many things in it. Understand? This is known as the solvent nature of water. So what is a solvent then? Remember children, a solvent means something, a certain substance that can dissolve other substances in it. Understand children, a solvent is a substance that can dissolve the other substances in it. So what are the substances we can dissolve in water? There are so many substances that we can dissolve in water. Okay, so you can make sugar solutions. How do you make sugar solutions? You can add some water to a glass and you can add sugar. So how to prepare a salt solution? You can do the same, right? You can take some water to a glass and you can put some salt and you can prepare the salt solution. So in our day-to-day -day activities, we have to use water to dissolve many things. So that is because water is a very good solvent. Just imagine if water cannot dissolve any of these things, what will happen? For example, if water cannot dissolve oxygen in it, what will happen to these aquatic animals and aquatic plants, they will die without oxygen. That is because these aquatic organisms, they absorb the oxygen that is dissolved in water. Understand? So that is why water is a very good solvent. You can consider water is one of the best solvents in the world. But at the same time, can water dissolve just any substance in it? We have a small experiment to do to study about this. We will do that now. Right children. So what is the experiment? Finding out how water is important as a solvent. Now we know what a solvent is. Solvent is a certain substance that can dissolve the other substances in it. Understand? So we are going to find whether uh, water is a good solvent or not. So what is the method? Very easy, I will explain. We are going to do this in the lab. When I explain the experiment, you will realize you all can do this experiment at home. Understand, we are going to uh, dissolve different substances in water. In the lab, I will show you what are the substances that uh, we are going to dissolve. So we are going to dissolve different, different substances and we are going to check whether those substances uh, dissolving water really well. Okay children, so simply we will write the method dissolve equal quantities equal quantities of different substances different substances in 5 milliliter of water in test tubes. Right? Dissolve equal quantities of different substances in 5 milliliters of water in test tubes. Now, when you do this activity, you don't have test tubes at home, but instead you can use glasses, right? So, you can take a set of glasses and you can fill equal amounts of water like this. And you can dissolve different substances equal quantities. Let's say uh, one teaspoon, maybe you can use one teaspoon, so half a teaspoon. Likewise, equal quantities you can use. Okay, so it's very easy to compare when you add the same amount of water, when you use the same amount of water and when you dissolve equal quantities of different substances, easy to compare, right? It increases the accuracy of the experiment. Now we will do this activity in the lab. Right children, 
Now we are going to check the solvent property of water. So what do we have to do to do this? Now I explained you we have to dissolve different substances in water and check whether those substances dissolve in water or not. So I have some substances here. Here we have white sugar, glucose, sodium bicarbonate, turmeric powder, laundry blue, common salt, paraffin wax, camphor balls or moth balls. Condis crystals, surgical spirit, coconut oil, here we have vinegar and kerosene. So first of all, I am going to take some these substances into these test tubes and later I am going to put water into each test tube, okay. First I will take some white sugar, these are in crystal form. And then glucose. Glucose is a white color powder. Sodium bicarbonate or baking powder. And then I am going to take some turmeric powder. And some laundry blue. common salt and then paraffin wax I will take three pieces and I am going to take camphor balls now And condis crystals. Now, even though you can't see, this is a very dark purple in color. So, for better observations, I'm going to take only a little amount. Surgical spirit. It's a colorless liquid. Coconut oil, vinegar, and finally kerosene. Right. So remember children, all these substances except for these condis crystals, you all can find at home. So that's why I told you earlier, you all can do this activity at home. Okay. So we will add water to this each test tube and check whether these substances are dissolved in water or not. Right. So here I'm going to use this syringe to take 5 milliliters each.
So first to the white sugar, we are going to add then the salt. Right, so you all can see sugar crystals, they are disappeared. Okay, so sugar crystals gradually disappear. So it means the sugar crystals dissolve in water really well. Okay, so it's a clear solution now. Right. Now we will take glucose. And again, you have to mix really well. So glucose dissolves in water easily. And it makes a colorless solution. Glucose disappears and it makes a colorless solution. And then we have sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate also dissolves well, making a white color solution. And then we will take turmeric powder. So the solution becomes yellow color. So anyway, we are going to leave these solutions uh, to set for a few minutes, okay? After that, we are going to observe again. And then laundry blow. So what happens to the solution children? It is blue color. Okay. Then common salt. common salt crystals slowly disappear. Okay. So it makes a clear solution. Then we'll take paraffin wax. So you all can see, even though I try to mix this paraffin wax with water, what happens? It won't mix. It means this paraffin wax does not dissolve in water. Instead, these pieces, they float on water. And then camphor balls. Again, we are taking equal volume of water right. even these camphor balls 
pieces even if I try to mix them they don't they don't dissolve in water right so look carefully next condis crystals So you all can see children, it makes a purple color solution. Remember I told you Condis crystals are dark purple in color. Okay. Then we are going to take surgical spirit. Right. Surgical spirit is a colorless solution. It dissolves really well in water. It means these two liquids mix really well with each other. Right. Here we have coconut oil. So when I mix this coconut oil with water, you all can see these oil globules. Can you see children? It looks like they mix. We will set it aside. And then we are going to take vinegar. So they mix really well with each other and solution is almost colorless. And finally we are going to take kerosene. See you all can see kerosene does not mix with water right so this water layer and kerosene layer they present separately kerosene layer floats on water layer okay children right so we will check now as we have mixed all these substances with water we are going to check these things again right so this white sugar solution is still the colorless solution glucose solution glucose with water it is also colorless. Right. Look at this solution, children. Sodium bicarbonate. Can you all see? Earlier it was a turbid solution, a white color solution. Now part of this sodium bicarbonate is uh, present as it's on the top layer. And some other parts present at the bottom. Okay, children. When initially we dissolve the sodium bicarbonate in water, it dissolves really well. But when we set it aside, after a little while when we check, we can see it does not dissolve really well. Okay, we will check the turmeric one. Ah, can you all see the turmeric powder? Even though uh, it looked like it dissolves really well earlier, when we keep it aside, after a little while when we check, you all can see Part of this turmeric powder remains at the bottom, but still the solution is yellow in color. It means this turmeric powder dissolves partially in water, not completely. We will check laundry blue. 
Can you all see laundry blue? It is also the same. The solution is blue color. But you all can see if you observe clearly, part of the laundry blue remains at the bottom of this test tube. It means just like this turmeric powder and sodium bicarbonate, this laundry blue also dissolves partially in water, not completely. Look at this common salt. It is still the clear solution. It means common salt dissolves really well in water. What about the paraffin wax? Paraffin wax, as I told you, even initially did not dissolve in water. So paraffin wax is something that does not dissolve in water. I will take the camphor balls. It is also the same. Okay, so paraffin wax and camphor balls, they don't dissolve in water. Condis crystals. Now condis crystals. Now because this solution is a very dark solution, uh, it's very difficult to observe. But these condis crystals dissolve really well in water. Okay, children. Right. Surgical spirit. It is still the clear solution. It means surgical spirit dissolves really well in water. And then coconut oil, now look at this one. Earlier it looked like it dissolves in water, but still the oil globules were there. Now you all can see this entire solution is divided into two layers. So the coconut oil layer present above the water layer. That is because these two substances do not mix with each other. Understand? So coconut oil is another substance that does not dissolve in water. Now vinegar, vinegar dissolves in water, that is why the solution is still clear. What about the kerosene oil? Even earlier we observed that kerosene oil does not dissolve in water. It present on top of the water layer as a, another layer. So it's very clear after doing this activity, there are some substances that dissolve really well in water and there are some other substances that do not dissolve in water. And some other substances are there, they dissolve in water partially. Okay, children. So you observe the experiment. I hope it's very clear. And I'm sure you all have done the same experiment at home. So what did you observe? Did you observe the same thing that I showed you? I'm sure if you use these uh, same substances, you must have observed the same experiments. Uh, but uh, when you do this activity at home, you don't have limit to this set of substances. Okay, so whatever the other substances that you can find, you can dissolve. Okay, for example, now here we have a, a turmeric powder. You can even add some curry powder to water and you can add some chili powder to water and you can check. So that's how when you learn science, you have to uh, do these experiments. You have to try all these new things. Then only you can learn these things really well. Okay? So we will write the observations. You all have to help me now. Observations. So here we have two columns, substances and observations. Now the first one is done. Okay? So white sugar, what happened when I dissolve white sugar? When you dissolve white sugar, it dissolves really well. Okay, so sugar crystals disappear. Sugar crystals disappear means it mixes really well with water. So after mixing this white sugar, after dissolving it, what was the color? The water was colorless, right? Sugar crystals disappear, solution is colorless. What is the second one? Glucose. Glucose, it is a white color powder. So what happened when I uh, mix some glucose to water? When I added some glucose to water? It again mixes with water really well, right? So what happens? Glucose gives the same observation. We will write glucose disappear. Glucose disappears. And after dissolving, what is the color of the solution? It was colorless. Solution is 
colorless. Solution is colorless. Okay. Condis crystals. Now, condis crystals, I know that it's difficult to find at home, but you observe when I was doing this one. Condis crystals are purple color crystals. What happened when I added some condis crystals to water? It nicely dissolves in water. And what was the so the color of the solution? It was purple in color. We will write. Condis crystals disappear. Condis crystals disappear. I will write in short form. Purple color solution. Purple color solution. Okay. Right. Surgical spirit. What happened when I added surgical spirit? Now surgical spirit is colorless. When I add a little bit of surgical spirit to water, they mix really well and the solution is still colorless. Okay. Right. Surgical spirit mixes well. Mixes well and colorless solution. Colorless solution. Okay. Coconut oil, what happened? After adding a little bit of coconut oil, when I tried to mix it, it looks like it mixes well. But after keeping it aside, you observe that it does not dissolve. So what happened? It becomes two layers. Coconut oil layer present above the layer of water. Right? So coconut oil layer present above the water layer. Therefore, it means coconut oil does not mix with water. It does not dissolve in water. Right? Coconut oil. We will write does not dissolve and separate to two layers. Separate the two layers. Okay. Next one. Laundry blue. Now when it comes to laundry blue, there are two types. You can use that powdered laundry blue as well as the liquid. Now I use the powdered one. So you observe that when I mix a little bit of laundry blue to water, the water turns blue color. But at the same time, some amount of laundry blue uh, is at the bottom. It means it dissolves partially, not completely. Because it dissolves partially, the water turns blue color. But at the same time, some amount will deposit at the bottom because it does not dissolve completely. Understand? We will write. Some amount remains at the bottom. Remains at the bottom. And blue solution. Blue color solution. Okay. What happened with the paraffin wax? Paraffin wax, it did not dissolve at all. Instead, what happens? It floats on water. Right? So, paraffin wax doesn't dissolve in water. Does not dissolve. Next one. Kerosene. What happened with kerosene? Didn't you observe the same observation as in coconut oil? It looks like it mixes really well, but when we stop stirring it, what happens? It separates into two layers. Okay, it means kerosene oil also does not dissolve in water, right? So kerosene does not dissolve. Separate to two layers. Okay. 
common salt, it was very clear, common salt nicely dissolves in water and the solution becomes colorless. Okay, common salt disappears. Common salt disappears. Solution is colorless. Solution is colorless. Okay, next one. Vinegar. What happened with vinegar? When you add a little bit of vinegar to water, it also mixes really well. And what is the color of the solution? It is colorless. Mixes well. Solution is colorless. Turmeric powder again as same as laundry blue. So the uh, solution becomes yellow color. But at the same time, some amount of turmeric powder will remain at the bottom. It means it dissolves only partially. We will write. Some amount remains at the bottom. yellow color solution. Yellow color solution. Camphor balls, what happens? Camphor or naphthalene balls does not dissolve. We will write. And the last one, sodium bicarbonate. Again, the solution becomes white color. Now, sodium bicarbonate is a white color powder, just like flour. So, what happened when I uh, mix it? It looks like it mixes really well, but after a little while, after making the solution, uh, I set it aside. Then, after a little while, when we observe what happens, that uh, some amount of sodium bicarbonate will deposit at the bottom. Okay, right. It means it dissolves partially. Some amount remains at the bottom. White solution. Okay, children. So, as I told you before, not only these substances, you can go with the other substances at home because you can find so many substances, other things at home that you can do the same experiment with. Okay, children. So, when you look at this table, it's very clear. Some of these substances, they dissolve really well in water. And some of these substances, they do not dissolve in water. And some other substances are there, they dissolve only partially, not completely. Right? So look at this uh, laundry blue and turmeric powder, sodium bicarbonate, I told you. After dissolving, some amount will remain at the bottom. That is because those type of substances will dissolve in water only partially, not completely. Right? I will mark the substances separately. We will see. So, if I take the substances that dissolve in water really well. So, look at this one. White sugar dissolves really well. Glucose, glucose disappears means it dissolves really well. Right? And condis crystals also dissipate means dissolves really well. Okay? Surgical spirit also mixes well and colorless solution. It means it also dissolves. And common salt, 
Again, common salt disappears. Solution is colorless. Common salt dissolves really well. Vinegar dissolves. And yeah. So those are the things that dissolves really well in water. Okay. Now we will mark the substances that dissolves partially in water. I will take a different color. Right. What are the substances that dissolve partially in water? Laundry blue. Right. Part of uh, the substance will remain at the bottom. They are for laundry blue and turmeric powder and sodium bicarbonate as well. And there are some other substances that do not dissolve in water at all. What are they? Coconut oil, paraffin wax, kerosene and camphor balls. Okay children, when you look at this list, it's very clear most of these substances are dissolved in water really well. Okay, so that is why we can consider water as a good solvent. So why? Because I explained you that solvent is something that can dissolve the other substances really well in it. So when you go through this list, it's clear water can act as a really good solvent because it can dissolve many substances. Okay children, so what is the conclusion after doing this experiment? Now water can dissolve some substances really well or some substances dissolve in water really well and there are some other substances dissolve in water only partially. At the same time there are some other substances that do not dissolve in water at all. We will write the conclusion now. Some substances some substances dissolve in water well next one well oh, here we can write completely and some substances Dissolve in water partially. And some substances do not dissolve. Water. Okay, children. Some substances dissolve in water well or completely, and some substances dissolve in water partially, not completely. Some amount will dissolve in water, and the other amount will remain. Okay, and some substances do not dissolve in water. So, after doing the experiment, uh, these are the conclusions that we can come up with. Okay, children. So, it's very clear. Now, when we were doing the experiment, it was very clear that water can dissolve many substances in it. So, that is why water becomes a really good solvent. Okay, children. We have a small assignment to do. Observe and record the positions of fish in a fish tank in which the water is bubbled with air or oxygen. So you all have seen fish tanks. Some of you have fish tanks at home, uh, but all of you have seen fish tanks. If you have observed clearly some of these fish tanks, they have these uh, air supply. Okay. And what we have to do, first we have to observe this fish tank uh, where the air is supplied or oxygen gas is supplied. Right, observe and record the positions of fish in a fish tank. Right, where they swim most of the time. In which the water is bubbled with air. So what happens, now look at this picture, that water is bubbled with air. Right, 
If water is bubbled with air, it means in these type of fish tanks, the water is well aerated, right? It mixes with air really well. So I told you these fish or aquatic organisms, they cannot inhale atmospheric oxygen or oxygen present in air. So they have to absorb the oxygen that is dissolved in water. Okay, so if there is an oxygen supply, it means additional oxygen is supplied to this water. Therefore, this water gets mixed with oxygen really well. Okay, so we can assume that all the places have a lot of oxygen if oxygen supply is there. So what will happen? These fish can swim any place and because they can obtain oxygen okay when they swim uh, to any place what will happen they can obtain oxygen because these type of fish tanks where additional oxygen is supplied or the water is aerated there is enough oxygen dissolved sometimes you will observe some of these fish they will come close to this oxygen inlet as well because there is a lot of oxygen next to this inlet whereas the bubbles are present but at the same time we can assume that these type of tanks they have enough oxygen um, everywhere next one now observe the positions of fish when the air supply is stopped what will happen if you stop supplying air what will happen children now after when if you stop the air supply after a little while this water does not get additional air. So this water has only the oxygen that is already dissolved in it. Right? So generally water gets oxygen from the surface because surface contacts with the atmosphere. Okay? Other than that, there is no way to get oxygen. Now what will happen children? Now basically the first instance fish still can remain because additional oxygen is still present, they can remain here. But after a little while, after consumption of all the oxygen present in the other places, they will move to the surface area. You will see this, right? They will move to the surface area. That is because when you compare the other areas with the surface area, right? The surface has more amount of oxygen because the surface is contact with the atmosphere that is where the water gets oxygen from okay so you will see that fish will move to the other places right near the surface okay children so other than me explaining this it's really important for you all to observe these type of things have you ever observed these type of fish tanks if you have fish tanks at home with this additional oxygen supply have you ever tried to do these type of activities? You can do these things and if you are a little scientist, you have to observe all these things children. Okay, so then you will realize what actually happens. Okay children, right, we will move to the next one. So gases such as oxygen, carbon dioxide are soluble in water. Fish use oxygen dissolved in water for respiration. We discussed about this part. Water is considered as a solvent. Why? What is a solvent? Solvent is something which can dissolve the other substances. Now water can dissolve many things in it. Okay. So water is considered as a solvent because many things dissolve in water. Okay. Similarly, we can separate the things. We can separate the things that are dissolved in water. We are going to discuss about this. We are going to do a small activity to observe this, right? Therefore, the solvent property of water helps us in day-to-day -day life as well as in industrial activities. What are these industries? We are going to discuss about the industries later as well. But let's consider salt industry. How salt is produced? Now I explain you that... Uh, uh, sea water has a lot of salts dissolving. You all have learned before that uh, salt is produced in saltans. So what happens in a saltan, children? So in a saltan, a large amount of sea water is collected in huge pools, right? This large amount of sea water, sea water has a lot of salts dissolved in it, right? 
So a large amount of seawater is collected in huge pools. Okay. And then what happens? They let this water evaporate using sun's heat. So what will happen when the water evaporates? The salt will remain at the bottom. So this is how we produce the salt that we eat in day-to-day -day life. Okay, children. So if water cannot dissolve many substances in it, can these type of salts dissolve in water? No. Right? So if water is not a very good solvent, can we produce salt and other substances? It is not possible. Right? So this is one instance where we use uh, water as a very good solvent and at the same time this is one instance we can separate the things that is dissolving water. So what happens in sea water you can consider it as a salt solution. It's a type of salt solution. Salts, different types of salts dissolve in it. What is the salt that we use in day-to-day -day life? Yes that is sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. Right? So this is like a salt solution. In this solution, what are the substances dissolved? Salt is dissolved in water. Right? Water is the solvent. Salt is a substance that is dissolved in solvent. Okay? So here what happens? In these solvents, we separate the substances dissolved in water. Salts are dissolved in water. When the water gets evaporated, what happens? Salt will get separated from water. Understand children? Right. There's another assignment. List the difficulties that you face when there is no water supply in your kitchen. Very interesting question. Right. So what will happen? You can imagine that you don't even have a stock tank. Most of us have stock tanks. Uh, even if there is a water cart, we can use the water that is stocked. Uh, let's assume that we don't have any stock tank. So if there is no water supply to your kitchen, what will happen? Now you all can think and list out what are the difficulties. So number one, you will miss your bed tea because there is no way to make your bed tea without water. So number one, as I told you, you will miss your bed tea. Then the other thing, there will be no water to drink. Unless you have some stock water, you don't have water to drink. Next thing, you won't be able to eat rice. Why? To make rice, we need water. What else, children? In order to make our curries or different vegetables, again, we need water. And we have to wash them really well with water. So without water, we can't wash them. We can't even cook them. And when we cook these curries, we need coconut milk. So there is no way to obtain coconut milk without water. Okay. And there is no way to wash our dishes as well. So I am sure you all understand how difficult it is to continue our day-to-day -day activities without water. This we discussed just about your kitchen. What about the other areas? If you don't have a stock tank, we can imagine that we don't have a stock tank when we do this activity, right? So if you don't have a stock tank and if there is no water supply, you will find it's very difficult to do your day-to-day -day activities. Okay, children. There's another part of the assignment. Record the methods of supplying nutrients for hydrophonic cultivation. What is hydrophonic cultivation, children? Now you all know during agriculture, you can plant different seeds and plantlets in soil. But there are some areas where they don't have enough space, okay, for cultivations. Well, therefore, in some areas, this special method called hydrophonic cultivation is used. What is hydrophonic cultivation? So hydrophonic cultivation means where a special type of solution is used to grow plants. Now, if we consider normal method of agriculture, we can plant our crops in soil, right? So all the nutrients 
are dissolved in or minerals and other substances are dissolved in soil water will be absorbed by the plant roots for the growth of the plant minerals present in the soil is really important now the plant roots cannot absorb these type of minerals if they are not dissolved in water it means the substances that are in solid form cannot be absorbed by the plant roots so what happens the minerals that are dissolved in soil water is absorbed by these plant roots so what is hydroponic cultivation the same condition is provided but using a liquid medium so here what do we do we can dissolve many nutrients that are required for the growth of the plant in water a special solution is made and we can use tube like structures like this okay so we can fill these tube like structures with that particular solution now this solution contains all the necessary uh, nutrients that are important for the growth of the plants okay you must have seen these type of uh, cultivations right and you can make small openings here and grow the plants in these tube like structures so even without soil you can grow plants so here what happens the roots are touched with this special solution the solution contains the necessary nutrients so the plants can grow by absorbing these nutrients so imagine if water is not a very good solvent is this possible no it's not possible even the plants also cannot absorb nutrients from the soil that is because nutrients that is present under solid state cannot be absorbed by plant roots okay children so it is clear that this special property of water acting as a solvent is important not only for us but also for the aquatic organism to live and for the plants to grow right so for the growth of the plants they have to absorb different nutrients from soil right so using even this hydroponic cultivation we can supply the nutrients so that is possible because nutrients can dissolve in water it means water is a very good solvent so that is why it says that the special property of water which means a solvent property acting as a solvent is important not only for us but also for the aquatic organism to live and for the plants to grow right children so we are going to learn what are the instances where water is important as a solvent okay we will go through the list to make drinks by dissolving sugar colorings and flavors in water we can make tea we can make different uh, juices with water okay children so you have to dissolve substances in water like sometimes you have to dissolve sugar and when you make tea you can dissolve milk powder okay children next one to dissolve salt and flavors to make food tasty so is food tasty without salt especially when we make curries it's not tasty without salt so during the activity observe that how well that salt dissolves in water okay if salt does not dissolve in water we can't prepare these type of yummy curries okay so to dissolve salt and flavors to make food tasty that's really important to dissolve concentrated acids in water to prepare battery acid artificial vinegar etc okay so in the lab we use different different acids some of them are concentrated acids which means very strong sometimes we need to use dilute acids so how to make dilute acids we can dissolve those concentrated acids in water and we can reduce the strength of these acids okay so thereby we can make dilute acids so here to dissolve concentrated acids in water to prepare battery acid now battery acid is dilute sulfuric acid so to make dilute sulfuric acid we have to dissolve concentrated sulfuric acid in water okay and to prepare artificial vinegar now there's a special acid contains in vinegar that is known as acetic acid 
So in order to make this artificial vinegar, we have to dissolve this acetic acid in water. Understand children? To dissolve medicine in water, there are different types of uh, formulas of medicine uh, made by dissolving different chemicals in water. Okay, children. Sometimes you have to mix different medicines with water and you have to drink it. Okay. To produce vaccines and saline for purposes of health. Now, saline, how to produce saline? Saline is made by mixing salt and other nutrients in water into a certain standard. Okay, children. Aquatic animals use oxygen that is dissolved in water to breathe. We discussed about this. Okay. To remove dirt on clothes and body, you have to mix this soap with water. So if you try to apply this soap in dry state, you can't wash your body and your clothes. Okay, you have to uh, mix this soap or whatever the detergent you use to wash clothes with water first. Use colored water for decorating purposes. You have seen in wedding functions, these type of colored water is used for decorations to make the environment beautiful. Understand children? Right children, we have another assignment. Prepare another list of instances where water is used as a solvent. Now we already discussed some instances. Apart from those examples, what are the other instances? You all can find more information about uh, the solvent nature of water and uh, do this activity. I will help you with some instances. When you draw pictures, when you need to paint it, what would you do? You will take some watercolors and you will mix it with water. So that is one instance. You can use watercolors because water is a very good solvent. What else children? We can use water to clean the vehicles or to wash the vehicles and also our clothes. Okay. And water can be used to prepare some chemical substances or maybe during some chemical reactions we need to use water because water is a very good solvent. Okay children. What are the other instances? And uh, in order to take some medicine, let's say, now most of the time small children are given with these yummy syrups, right? They are very tasty. That is because small children cannot swallow these uh, tablets. Okay, but sometimes there are some medicines, they don't come in this syrup form. So what do we have to do? If we have to give a tablet to a small child, it's a little risky to give it to the child because they can't swallow it really well. So in that case, we can crush that tablet and we can mix it with a little bit of water and we can give it to them. That is another instance. So in this way, you can think of many other instances. So when you do your day-to-day -day activities, there are so many instances that we use water as a very good solvent. Okay, children. Extra knowledge part, but it's really important. Dilute sulfuric acid is prepared by dissolving concentrated sulfuric acid in water. Battery acid contains dilute sulfuric acid. I already explained this to you. What is this? This is a vehicle battery. This is again known as lead acid accumulator. Okay, so why is it called lead acid accumulator? Because it has lead plates immersed in dilute sulfuric acid right dilute sulfuric acid what is this dilute sulfuric acid it is prepared by dissolving concentrated sulfuric acid in water okay i explained you that during different chemical reactions when we do different chemical experiments we need to use water to dissolve different things okay next one artificial vinegar is prepared by dissolving acetic acid in water do you remember i explained that the substance present in vinegar or the acid present in vinegar is acetic acid. So in order to prepare this artificial vinegar, what do we have to do? We have to dissolve acetic acid in water. Okay. And a type of saline solution is prepared by diluting sodium chloride solution to a standard concentration. This is also I explained. So what is sodium chloride? Sodium chloride is a salt we consume in our day-to-day -day 
activities. So it says a type of saline solution is prepared by diluting. Diluting means the strength is reduced. Okay. Diluting sodium chloride solution to a standard concentration. There is a certain proportion that we have to mix when we prepare the saline solution. Understand children? We have another assignment here. Prepare some colored solutions by dissolving different colors of dye in water. So what are the colors that you can use? You can use uh, water colors or even food coloring, right? Pour them into glass containers with different shapes. Look at this picture. These two pictures. Containers with different shapes containing colored water. Right? It's really beautiful. Okay? Prepare a list of instances where such colorful solutions are used in our day-to-day -day life. So most of the time, these type of colored water is used to decorate. So uh, to decorate the banquet hall, sometimes uh, these type of colored water is used. What are the other instances, children? Sometimes in some toys also, these type of uh, colored gel-like water present. Okay? And sometimes you have seen in ornaments, beautiful those decorations, and in some paperweights, these type of colored water is present. Okay? And sometimes in some stationery, pencil cases and some uh, fancy pencils and those fancy uh, rulers are there. They have different parts filled with this colored water. And even some bags, you must have seen these type of things. Some transparent bags. Okay, they have different decorations like this. These parts are filled with this colored water. Okay, so in day-to-day -day life, this colored water is used in different, different uh, activities. Okay, there are different instances where we use uh, this type of colored water. So most of the time we use this colored water because it's very beautiful. Therefore, for decorating purposes, we use this colored water. Okay, children. Another assignment, collect some labels of different kinds of soft drinks. Now, when it comes to soft drinks, everything is dissolved in water. Okay, so list out the substances that are dissolved in water to prepare them. Right, so soft drinks, most of them have different colors, different tastes. So whatever is added to the soft drinks are mixed with water or dissolved in water. So you can collect these type of labels and you can go through them. What are the substances that are dissolved in water? So here in this first label, it's mentioned uh, fat, carbohydrate, calcium, sodium, protein. All these substances are dissolved in water. So if you check the ingredients, the main ingredient is water. Okay, the main ingredient is water and other ingredients also there. So, all the other ingredients are actually dissolved in water. Okay, so if you check the ingredients, you will realize water is the main ingredient. Okay, children, even in the second label, uh, under ingredients, water is given. Okay, and other uh, ingredients given as like here, it's given purified water. Okay, sugar, aspartame, cola flavor ginger, citric acid, sodium benzoate, all these other substances are dissolved in this purified water. Okay, children. So it's very important to observe these type of labels and you can understand that many substances are dissolved in water, which means now here, if you go through this food label, now there are more than 10 ingredients present apart from water. It means all the other ingredients are dissolved in water. That is because water is a really good solvent. Okay, so if water cannot dissolve these other substances in it, there is no way to prepare these type of solutions, these type of drinks. So it's very clear that water is a really good solvent that can dissolve many substances in it. Okay, children, we have an experiment to do now. Do you remember I explained that the things that are dissolved in water can be separated? And at the same time, I told you that I am going to show you using an 
activity that these substances dissolving water can be separated. Now we are going to do that activity as an experiment, right? So the experiment separating materials dissolved in water, okay? So what are the materials we need? We need the salt solution and we need a Bunsen burner or a spirit lamp. Now remember this activity also is a very very simple activity like the first one, okay? You all can do this activity at home. So you don't have Bunsen burners or even spirit lamps at home. What can you use? You simply can use a candle. Okay. And salt solution. We all can prepare one, right? Salt solution. And we can uh, use a Bunsen burner or a spirit lamp. And we need a lid of a tin. A biscuit tin lid. That's fine. Okay. We can use a tripod to place this lid on this one. So if we can't. Now at home you don't have a tripod. So you can make a frame using a cardboard box and you can do the same activity. Okay. We will write the salt solution. I'm going to explain you how to prepare a salt solution. Now salt solution is prepared by mixing some white color salt in water. Salt is a white color substance. Okay. A Bunsen burner. Bunsen burner or a spirit lamp. Spirit lamp. Lid of a tin. A lid of a tin. A tripod. Salt solution, Bunsen burner or a spirit lamp, a lid of a tin, tripod. Okay. So I will explain you how to do this activity now. Look at the picture. Now this side shows how we are going to do this activity in the laboratory. This is how you all can do it at home. I told you it's really easy to do this activity even at home. Okay. So you can do this activity at home in this way. Right, this is the frame made with the cardboard box, okay, and this is the lid of the tin and the candle, okay. Now, here I will label this side this is the tripod, and this is the lid of the tin, lid of a tin. Right, and this is the spirit lamp. We can even use a Bunsen burner. Spirit lamp. Lid of a tin, tripod, spirit lamp. Okay, so what do we have to do first? You have to prepare a salt solution first, right? You can mix a little bit of salt, some amount of salt in water, and you can stir it really well and you can prepare the salt solution. Then what you have to do, you have to pour a little amount of that salt solution to this lid and you have to heat it up and observe what happens. Okay, so put some common salt solution onto the lid and heat it as shown in the above diagram. Okay, use a tripod and a wine spirit lamp or an empty box of milk powder with a ventilator at the side and a lighted candle to heat it, right? Why ventilator? We have to provide air, okay? Record your observations. We are going to make the salt solution and we are going to pour a little bit of salt solution into the tin and tin lid and we are going to heat it up and observe. We'll do the activity now, right children? By doing this activity, I am going to show you that materials that are dissolved in water can be separated, right? So what do we need? First of all, we need to make a salt solution. So here I have some water and this salt. I am going to dissolve some salt in water. So by dissolving some salt in water, we can prepare the salt solution. Common salt solution.
Now I explained you what are the steps of this experiment and how to do this. Right. So I prepared the salt solution now. What do we have to do now? We have to pour some amount of the salt solution into this tin lid, right? So I am going to pour a little amount like this. And then we need to heat this. So I am going to heat this using the Bunsen burner. So observe what happens carefully children. So you can see the salt solution is a colorless solution. So observe what happens when this setup gets heated up. So you all can see the solution starts to boil. You all can see the tiny bubbles of the solution. Observe carefully what happens children. Now can you see the amount of the solution reduces gradually. The amount of the liquid reduces. And at the same time, I think you can observe carefully. So, certain places get white in color. See, look at this place. What happens here, children, when the water gets heated up, when the salt solution gets heated up, the water evaporates. So, what is contained in salt solution? Salt and water. Water is the solvent, salt is the solute, which means a substance that is dissolved in water. Right? So, when we heat this solution, the amount of water present in this solution evaporates because of heat. So, you can see. There is no water remaining here. Instead, a white color powder is remaining. Right. We will take it out now. Right children, I think you all can observe very clearly. Earlier we had the salt solution, water and salt mixture. Now water is not there. Now that liquid substance is not there, the solution is not there. You can see instead a white color powder is remaining. Observe clearly, can you see the white color powder? What is this white color powder children? This is the salt. So what happens when you heat a salt solution, the water present in that salt solution evaporates and the salt remains. Right? The same process takes place in saltants. This is the method that we produce salt from seawater. Right? So you can consider this uh, salt water sample as the seawater sample. Right? What we prepared here today is uh, something equal to seawater, right? So seawater contains a lot of salt. We collect all the seawater into huge pools and we let the water evaporate and thereby we can produce salt. So after doing this experiment, it's very clear the substances that are dissolved in water can be separated. Right children, so you observed what happened. So you must have done the same activity at home, I'm sure. What happened children? What was the observations? So we poured a little amount of salt solution to this lid and we heated it up. What happened? The water evaporates and salt was remaining on the lid. Okay, it means we prepared the salt solution by, it was very clear, we prepared the salt solution by 
adding salt or mixing salt in water right so salt solution contains water and salt okay so because of water's solvent property we can prepare the salt solution when we heat the solution what happens water evaporates and salt remains on the lid it means we can separate the substances that are dissolved in water okay children so we will write the observations water evaporates water evaporates salt remains on the lid as a white color powder right salt remains on the lid as a white powder okay so what is the conclusion the conclusion after doing this activity is it is possible to separate the substances that are dissolved in water okay we will write the substances that are dissolved in water can be separated can be separated okay conclusion the substances that are dissolved in water can be separated so this property is used in many industries it means we can separate the substances dissolved in water this quality is used in many industries we are going to learn those industries learn about those industries next okay so i told you there are many industries use that solvent property of water and the ability of uh, separating the substances dissolved in water what is this now this is a salt okay so how do we produce salt i already explained you we have to collect uh, sea water into huge pools different types of salts of minerals are dissolved in water when rivers streams and waterways are flowing towards the sea okay in soil there are many salts dissolved okay therefore what happens different types of salts of minerals are dissolved in water when rivers streams and waterways are flowing towards the sea so some of these soil is washed away with water therefore these minerals these different salts are added to water so you all know the final destination of this water is the ocean and seas okay when this happens for long period of time sea water becomes salty so when a lot of salt is added and washed away with water and added to the sea when this happen for over and over for a long period of time finally the sea water becomes really salt okay so what are the different substances different types of salts are dissolved in this sea water children like sodium chloride calcium chloride magnesium chloride likewise the main salt that we use in our day to day life is sodium chloride okay the sodium chloride is the mineral salt that dissolved most in the sea water other substances also there okay so how do we produce salt salt is produced from sea water by evaporating water exposed into solar heat so what do we do here as i mentioned you before we have to collect this sea water into huge pools okay so we have to expose these huge pools to daylight because the salt is present in coastal areas and coastal areas they normally have strong sunlight okay so enough temperature is there to evaporate this water but remember this takes a few months okay this process doesn't take place within 2 3 days because we collect a large amount of water therefore it will take time 
So finally what happens? This water will evaporate completely and salt will remain at the bottom of the pool. So we can collect this salt. Now this salt will be a mixture of different substances. Sodium chloride, calcium chloride, magnesium chloride and other impure substances as well. So what is done next is all the other substances are removed from sodium chloride and sodium chloride will be sent to the market. Understand children? So this is how we produce salt. Now when it comes to this uh, seawater, seawater is a mixture of different different salts. It means that is because of water is a very good solvent. Many salts are dissolved in seawater and at the same time we can separate the substances dissolved in water. Okay, here the method we separate the substances dissolved in water is by heating. We use the uh, sun's heat here. Okay children, we will move to the next one. Now what is this? This is sugar cane. The juice in sugar cane contains sucrose dissolved in water. What is this sucrose? Sucrose is a type of sugar. There are different names for different types of sugar. Glucose is a type of sugar. Sucrose is the sugar that we eat in our day-to-day -day life. We add to our tea, we make cake with sugar, okay. To make different food items, we use sugar, right. So sugar is produced by removing the water in sugar cane. So this sucrose solution is contained in the sugar cane. Where is it contained? It's contained in the stem part. So what happens here? These people, they collect these stem part and they cut them into small pieces and then using machines, they crush them. So when they crush them, what happens? They can separate the juice or this sugar solution. And then what happens? Sugar is produced by removing the water in sugar cane. So sugar solution is collected and now the sugar solution is a mixture of sucrose sugar and water. With the help of the machines, water is removed, sugar will remain. The sucrose sugar will remain. I mentioned you that sucrose is the sugar that we uh, use in our day-to-day -day life. What are the other different types of sugar? Glucose is a type and there is another sugar called lactose present in milk. Likewise, you are going to learn these different types of sugar in the upper grades. Okay, so this is how we produce sugar in sugar factories. So if water is not a good solvent, is this possible? No. If we cannot separate the substances dissolved in water, is this a total process possible? It's not. Okay, so it's very clear water is a very good solvent and it can dissolve many substances in it and at the same time we can separate the substances that are dissolved in water. Understand? Right. Here, this is another industry. We will go through this. A sugar solution called sweet toddy can be extracted from coconut flour. Okay. Now look at this. This person is collecting that sweet toddy. Right. So you all have seen coconut flour, right? Now coconut flour present as a cluster or it is known as inflorescence. Okay. Coconut flour. Now it's something like this. Present as a cluster. These tiny parts are the flowers, right? So, in these flowers, there is a sugary solution, a sweet solution which is known as sweet toddy. Okay, so people, they collect this sweet toddy. Can you see these uh, clay pots hanging over here? That's how they collect this sweet toddy. But remember, this also takes weeks to collect this sweet toddy. They have to make a cut somewhere in this flower and they have to hang this pot next to this one and drop wise the sweet toddy will be collected. Right, it is collected as drop wise. That's why I said uh, 
it takes a little time to collect the entire amount of sweet toddy from one flower. Okay, children. So what happens now? This is sweet in taste. So we can make trickle and we can even make jaggery using this sweet toddy. We will see how. Trickle can be produced by removing some amount of water from this sweet toddy. So trickle is used to uh, make sweet meats, different types of sweet items. We use trickle. Okay. So what happens? We collect this sweet toddy and we have to heat this up. So what happens? This sweet toddy is a mixture of sugar and water. So when you heat this solution up, water will evaporate. Okay. Trickle can be produced by removing some amount of water. When you remove this water partially, what will happen? Only part of the water will evaporate and the other part will remain. So then this entire solution will become thicker than before. This thick solution is known as trickle. Understand the thick solution is known as trickle and then if water is totally removed, let's say that if we heat this trickle again and again, if you provide more temperature, the entire amount of water will evaporate from this setup. Then what will happen? A solid will remain, a solid part will remain and that is known as jaggery. Okay children, if water is totally removed from sweet toddy, jaggery can be produced. So if we, uh, these coconut flowers, uh, they produce a special type of solution called sweet toddy. It's a mixture of type of sugar and water. So if we collect this sweet toddy and if we heat it up partially, what will happen? Water will evaporate, making the other remaining solution thicker than before. That is known as trickle. That's how you produce trickle. But if you completely remove the water from this sweet toddy, what will happen? A solid part will remain and it is known as jaggery. Understand children? Jaggery and treacle can also be produced from palmyra and kitol trees. This palmyra, kitol, coconut, they are from the same family. Therefore, we can produce this treacle and jaggery from these trees as well. Understand children? So I am sure you understand now how important water as a solvent. And at the same time, we can separate the substances that are dissolved in water. So most of the time we can use as the method of separation, we can use heat, but there are other methods as well. We have another assignment. Design a poster to illustrate the use of water as a solvent. Now we learn there are so many uses of water as a solvent. Right, there are many instances that water becomes a really good solvent in our day-to-day -day life. Now, we have to put those things that we learn into a poster. What is a poster? Can we just write down a poster as a note? You can, but at the same time, it's not very attractive. Remember, the poster should be an attractive one, an eye-catching one. Then only people will come and read the poster. So how do you make it attractive? You can use pictures, you can use colors, you can use different fonts, important parts you can highlight. Understand? Then the other people will feel like reading it. Okay, children? So if you ever get a question asking to make a poster or even to prepare a leaflet, remember, you have to make it a little attractively. Okay, children? So at the same time, remember, you have to add the important points as well, right? It's not all about adding colors and pictures and everything. At the same time, you have to write some important points as well. Okay, children. So I will give you an example. Now we learned uh, the instances where water is important as a good solvent. So you can write the topic here, okay? And you can find a lot of pictures and you can paste them. Under each in short form, you can write what is the instance that water is important as a solvent. Okay, something like that. 
okay that is one method or even you can uh, prepare it as using charts maybe a spider chart so here you can write uh, importance of water as a solvent okay here you can add what are the instances you can write or maybe you can even paste picture and write it in short form okay children so this is how you can prepare a poster but i'm sure you all have better ideas as well you all can use them okay but you all have to do this in your writing book practice something like this so it's very easy to answer the questions when you get questions like this uh, in your exams okay